Hi, my name is Barbara Gray from Clarity Stamp here in the UK and welcome to YouTube Tuesday. Today is the third in uh, a Christmas bauble series uh, that I've been doing using a set of Christmas stamps, two-way overlay stamps that I illustrated. Let me show you the stamps first and then, uh, and then we'll look at the third one today. So the first time we got together, I showed you Peace on Earth and the two-way. This one sits on top of that one. In the first video, I showed you how that works. Uh, in, the, in the second video, I went to Joy to the World and I showed you how to stamp onto designer paper if you're, if you're making loads of cards, that's a really good thing. Now, bear in mind though, everything that I'm showing you here is interchangeable. So you could do that technique with those stamps and that technique with these stamps and so on and so on. Now today what I want to look at is the Happy Christmas stamp. And today we're going to do something completely different and I'm going to get the shrink plastic out. So we've got three different techniques or four different techniques. I want to use white shrink today and if we have time I'd like to try the black as well because nobody ever goes to the black shrink. It's in the pack and nobody uses the black. So let's, let's, let's have a look at this particular stamp and I'll show you a few tricks how to use shrink plastic. Um, do you want to see how tiny it gets? Let's have a look. So let's say that that's the stamp. That's the stamp, but that's not what we're headed for. This is what we're headed for. Look at that. Isn't that dinky? Look, so when I turn it over, because this is the other nice thing about these baubles. Look, I love this. All right, let me take that out of the way. Look how tiny that is. One of the things worth bearing in mind is the inside is not symmetrical, but the shape is. So that means that you can stamp on both sides, and that's what I want to show you how to do that. One of the things that I has always eluded me and I finally worked it out is how to colour in shrink. This is well worth knowing. So let's take a piece of shrink plastic first. Let's take a piece of shrink. Here we go. I'll go with a, a piece of white. I'm right into this at the moment. It's, uh, it's like the old tricks are sometimes the best tricks, aren't they? Let's take a bit of white. There we go. Oh, hello. <laughs> That's what happens when you don't want to waste any. Excuse me a minute. Right, okay. We get our shrink plastic from graphics. Fantastic. Uh, it comes in a pack. I can show you the pack. 20 sheets. I think you get five clear, five, five translucent, five black and five white. And we're going to use the white and the black out of the pack. All right. Okay, it's good gear. Now, Let's take a look at this. One of the first things you've got to do is get some sandpaper. You don't want to use the really rough stuff. You want to use almost like glass paper. Let me, do you know what? I found something out. Dave told me this. This is, well, this is worth interest. This is interesting. On the back of the sandpaper, I'm probably teaching you something you already know. It says like 80, and then it says 120, and then on this one it says 240. The, the rougher the sandpaper, the lower the number. So 80 is the real, really rough, scratchy stuff. And then it gets finer and finer. So 240 is the real fine stuff. Now, what Dave told me was that the number, like 80, what that means is there's like 80 grains of sand per square centimetre or something like that. Right? Isn't that interesting? Or... And so 240 grains of sand per square something else. I think it's, it's got to be centimetre, isn't it? Inch should be a bit loose. So, but that's something I, we can look up. I'm going to go with the absolute finest one, which is 240. And so with the white shrink, what we want to do, otherwise you just slide around, you're just going to lightly sand, you're going to rough up the surface. And that gives the stamp a bit more traction or purchase, whatever you want to call it, it grips better. What's a good idea is if you're going to do both sides, then sand both sides while you're at it, right? And then that way it's, uh, it's ready to go on both sides, right? And I can feel it, it's sandy now. This is on the white, this is on the white. So let's take our Happy Christmas stamp and I'll use a black archival ink pad 
and I'm going to just stamp my black archival pad into that sanded area now. My black uh, archival stamp. There we go. So we'll just do that. And then we'll lift that over. And you're going to cut this out. So, so we'll just stamp that there like so. And what I've found is as well, when you go to colour it in, I'll show you in a minute. This is so interesting, right? So let me just get a good image. And because we've sanded it, we'll get a good image. Look, beautiful. And now that needs to dry before I can start. If It does, it just needs to dry. So let me go to one that I did earlier. That's all sanded already. And I'll pop, you can see why my kitchen's such a mess. So pop that one over there. This one's dry already. So I'm in mass production here, you see. And then what I'm going to do is take this one and turn it over and I can actually see through this. I can see through there. I've sanded that as well. I can see through. I don't know if the camera can pick this up, but I can actually see right through there with a white piece of paper underneath it. If, if you like, you could use a light wave underneath and then you can really see where you're stamping. But this is perfectly adequate for me. And I just want to show you how the... Um, say you're actually making proper baubles to hang or earrings. Earrings would be perfect, wouldn't they? What gorgeous little beautiful gifts these would make as earrings. And so what you're going to do now, you see, you've sanded this side already and then you can see, excuse my head, and then you're going to line up. It is better with a light wave, I've got to be honest, but there you go. So that'll do. And then you just line that up and that will work brilliantly. Okay. So let's see if I got it. Good enough. Good enough. So then when I lift this up to the light, I can see that it's absolutely in exactly the same place, both back and front, which is what I'm after. What I'm going to do as well, before I shrink it, I'm going to make the hole in the top so I can hang it. So this is a little bit of a sledgehammer to crack a nut. Look at this. You wouldn't want to get your fingers caught in that thing, would you? But what I need is just the, I just need, the, all I ever use it for is this little hole. Uh, okay, there, that'll do. Right, and that will get really, really tiny, like rinky dink. What I wanted to show you was this. If you, let me see, where's the one I was, that'll do. This is the one we're going to work on. So this is the wet one. This is the dry one. That's the dry one on this side. And I wanted to show you something. When you colour in on a sanded piece, I'll show you a couple of tricks. Because the colouring has always been a bit of a, a riddle to me. But if I take Faber-Castell polychromos or pergoliners, they've got to be that sort of oily, waxy-based pencil. I think they work brilliantly. If I take one of those pencils, let me just take, for example, a nice blue for the sky. There we go. Let's take a couple of blues and I'll show you what I'm talking about. A really nice sky. I'm, I'm, I'm aware of the fact that the back is, um, is still wet. So I'm going to actually work on this one here. So, so I've got another trick for this one. Right, so let me just show you. And you'll see that as I go over, because it's been sanded, you'll see it's really easy to colour in. Now, you don't have to be too perfectionist. What you'll find is when this shrinks, it gets really intense anyway. If I go to an area that hasn't been sanded, let me find a piece that hasn't been, there are, this corner here hasn't been sanded. Look, see, it will not take the pencil. As soon as I sand it, it does. Okay, and that's the point. So, for example, we can colour in with pencils. And when you colour in with pencils, you can add shade, you can, you can, you don't have to press too hard, but look, I can add shade in here as well. In fact, if I wanted to, isn't this nice? Look, if I wanted to, I could, I can, I can color it in really beautifully, but you don't want to go too dark because it will get really dark. 
but you can blend it beautifully. And what I would suggest is that probably small circular motions, now check this out, rather than lines like that, you'll find that small circular motions when you colour in will give you a smoother finish look, right? So in other words, I'm just doing this bit to show you. You can get here, if you want to get that sort of three, the fact that it's a bauble, so it's got a bit more texture, then maybe leave a little bit of white there. Look, see what I'm getting at here. Do that and then maybe leave a little bit of white and then add a little bit of depth around here. So you're getting a shadow on that side there. Have a play. So that's that would be my way of creating that kind of a whiteness there. So it looks as if the light's hitting it. But it works really well provided that you um, that you sand it first. That's the key. Right. So then, of course, that's going to take a while, isn't it? The, the results are beautiful. And I, I will show you the, the see this one here that I did early that I showed you earlier. That one is done colouring in. So you can really see how intense that's ready to too late now. I should have uh, you color it in beforehand, but I just wanted to show what it looked like. But you can see how intense that blue gets. That blue gets that blue when it shrinks. OK, so imagine we want to do loads of earrings as presents. The last thing you want to do is spend an hour coloring each one in. Let's try something else for speed. Um, I tried it and it works and it's really cool. Let's give it a go. See, see if I can get it right. Because remember, these stamps, they're two way overlays, aren't they? So this stamp has also got uh, a stamp that sits over the top. So I was thinking, well, why, why don't I use that then? What's just, you know, there's no, there's no harm in trying, is there? So I was thinking that what might be really nice, let's see, bearing in mind though, that I also know that these, these are very fast drying ink pads, archivals. It's got to be permanent, remember? Otherwise, I'd just be able to run my finger through it. So what I was thinking was, how about this? If I take uh, a little bit of, let's do a bit of yellow. This is called Buttercup. And what about if I just smear a bit of yellow on there? Let me see if this actually, if we see it when we do this. Let's just do it and see what happens. Right. See if you can see it. So I've just smeared a bit of yellow on there. And then I've stamped it because it's drying, isn't it? Archival ink dries so quickly. So we'll stamp it straight on there and then we'll peel it off. Oh, yeah. So you can see now the colour. Can you see that, Simon? If I hold it up. Can you see that? Yes. Good. So then let me take some peat moss. Who's peat moss? Peat moss. Let me take some peat moss and let's make a bit of a... Uh, a, a vignette, shall we? A little bit of a vignette, a vinaigrette, right, round the outside. And what I'll do is I'll take one of these and I'll just, let me see if I tap it around a bit so it's not quite so savage. Let's see. And the thing about this is, you see, so then I'll hover over the top, bearing in mind I'm working with fast drying ink pads. However, we just got to be a bit faster. Whoa. So you see now, this is looking very arty. Can you see that? Yes, that's so cool. Right, well, while we're at it, let me just let me just put a bit more peat moss around the back as well. We might as well kill two birds with one stone. So we'll do a bit of peat moss again, because now I know that the 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 stamp has got peat moss on it, and I don't want to go in with yellow now. Right, there we go like that. And then I'm going to... Add some to the back as well, because we're going to shrink both sides, obviously. It's not that stating the obvious, is it? Right, so we'll do that. This is going to look really cool. And all of, well, <laughs> what I am saying is that when it's shrunk, it gets a lot more vibrant, and I know that. So these little Wendy Vecchia, these little baby archivals are really nice. Let's try a bit of orange, just because I've got it handy. See what happens if we put a bit of orange in, shall we? So you see what I'm doing is I'm doing one colour at a time and then I'm just overlay back in again. And this is how I'm applying colour. It's a lot faster than colouring in. Cool, that's going to look lovely. Do you know what? We might have to do a little bit of that orange on this side as well. About there. Let's do it a bit different this time. Do a bit of orange there. See what happens if we do. I think I may have overcooked that. <laughs> 
Right. Oh, it's a journey. There you go. So you hover over the top. What a great way to colour in. I love our two-way overlay Christmas baubles. That is going to look so nice. Right. Um, we've got three-way overlay stamps as well, which are gorgeous. These are the two-way overlays. You should check them out. They're really clever. So now I've done that, the next thing I need to do is cut this out and then we're going to shrink it. So let me just find, I've got a really pair, a really good pair of scissors, small, sharp scissors, and I'm going to leave myself a little gap, a little border, because when it shrinks, that will shrink to pretty much nothing. Um, let's have a look. I'll just go around, you see, and just gently take my time. And then, hopefully, just cut that away. Let's see, on this side. Yeah, because it was centred. Who says, right? Let's see, I think it's going to be quite arty, this one. Peat moss is a great colour. But you can make the most gorgeous little hangings like this, can't you? Right, here we go. Try not to... Then we'll see what happens, shall we? In for a penny, in for a pound. And then when we've done that, when we've done this one, should we try the black? Let's try this first. This could be a calamity. If it is, I've got loads I did earlier. You see, the thing is, I've got a cooker, like most of us. We've got an oven in the, in the kitchen, and it works brilliantly. You put this on a Teflon tray, in the arga, in the oven, wait two minutes, bring it out, and it shrinks just perfectly. However, here in El Studio, a la Clarity Towers, we don't have an arga. I really must complain to the management. So, what we're gonna do is, we're gonna use a heat gun. You ready? Right, so we need a heat gun. I need also, just a minute, don't go anywhere. I had a mat and then I lost it. Where's that craft mat? I know I, I got it out and I said, we need one because you need something heat resistant. Here it is. Who says? Right, so get rid of that. Look, this is Sam Crow. That's what happened the last time she was here. And you don't even want to see what she did to me jelly plate. Right, okay. Yes, yeah, Sam. Oh, I've got my eye on you, mate. Right, I love Sam. But she is a messy bugger when she works. Okay, so now we've got a heat resistant mat. Now we've got our. <laughs> we've got that. We need to protect my fingers. I need some tweezers. Let's get that out of the way. Simon, are you ready? We're doing this thing. Right, start slow. Actually, I'm left handed, so I've, I think I've got a bit more. Like that. Hold it like that. Right, and now we're going to go. Right, and we'll start. Like I say, if, it's, if it gets a little bit too, you can always just put it in the oven. It takes two minutes. Oh dear, what can the matter be? Here we go, look. Oh, hey! <laughs> Come on, don't stick, don't stick, don't stick. Don't stick now, you're nearly there. Come on, get out, hang on, hang on, get off, get off, get off, get off. Turning, turning, all oh, the other sides worked as well. Right, here we go. And then I just need something flat, what a result. Hang on, I need something flat to flatten it. Well, hey! <laughs> if you do it in the oven, it gets even smaller. Hang on. What heat have I got it on now? I got it on high. Wait, hey. Hang on, turn it over. Isn't this beautiful? That'll do. Stop. Flatten. One earring is made. Should we have a look? <laughs> this is so gorgeous. Look how tiny that is. Look, there's one side. Isn't that beautiful? Look at the size of the stamp. 
Look at the size of the stamp that we've created that from. There's one side and there's the other side. And we used the archival links just with the second stamp to do that. Doesn't that look smashing? There you go. Just so you know, it is permanent. Right, that does not come off. That's done now. Isn't that a lovely little thing? Do you know, I think these look really nice. You know, when I, um, I showed you earlier this one that I'd coloured in, see, I think this would make a lovely Christmas card because you hang it on the card and then the person has something to dangle, uh, you know, or a little earring or just something. In our house, we have a really nice, um, like a spruce branch hanging over the, the kitchen island. And we hang all these little things because it can't have much weight to it, otherwise all the spruce branch collapses. So we use lace and little things like this and just little trinkets. I think it's a smashing way to go. Okay, enough waffle. So now you know how that works. Now I want to show you how it works on black. This is a different sort of thing. Right, but let's just have a go. So black, let me get some black shrink out of, of my stash. Now, the thing is with the black, you treat it differently, but it looks really good when it's done. Right, so we'll take the black, and it's the same on both sides. So, good luck with getting it in the right place. No, there is a simple way of doing it. What you do is, you stamp on this side, you cut it out, and then you stamp the other one, and that way you know that it's going to work. Okay, now let me just think what I'm doing. Right, so do we sand this? No, we do not. If you sand this, you're going to have, well, if you sand it, it won't work. So what we're going to do instead, we're going to talc it. So we're going to put a bit of talcum powder down, like so. And what that will, that will help, just trust me, right? So we just put a bit of talcum powder down or corn flour or anti-static, whatever you, you know, whatever you've got in the cupboard. Right, so we'll do that. Talc, um, what's that corn flour pad, pad? You know what we use, anti-static mats, pads, things. That'll do. Right, so we've done that. That will help again with the stamping. Then what we need, hold on a minute, because I've got, this is what we're going to use this time. We're going to use mica powders. Let me just get my ducks in a row here. We don't need that anymore. We need a bit of copy paper. Right. Sorry about this, guys. I know I should be organised. Right. We've got a bit of copy paper. And then we got the Versamart ink pad. Scanning, scanning, scanning. We must have it here. I got it. I tell you what, this is quite an accomplishment, you know. So I've got that. Then I need a stamp. Now, which stamp do you think I should use? Uh, should we do the Happy Christmas again? Should we do, or should we do the one that we did in the first, in the first, I like this one. We're going to go with Peace on Earth. It's just lovely, right? So we'll do the Peace on Earth. We'll do the line art. We'll do the line art one. Although it does look good with the, um, funny enough, you can do this with the other one as well, the, the infill one. Right, so hopefully this is clean, clean enough. Right, this is a Versamart ink pad. We're going to use a Versamart ink pad. It's the one that you would call it not so clean. Oh dear, sorry about that. Right, clean your stamp before you use your Versamart ink pad. Then what you're going to do is blot it on a bit of copy paper first. Ah, oh, it's really dirty, isn't it? Won't make any difference. Right, so then you ink, blot, and then we're going to plot. So you ink, blot, plot. And because you've blotted before you plot, you won't slide around. You're not over inking it. You're not getting a squelch. Because bear in mind, the ink can't go anywhere on plastic, can it? It can't go anywhere on shrink plastic. So we'll do that. I reckon that'll do the job. We'll lift that off. And hopefully you can see there that we've got the image. Yeah? Got that? I think you got that. Yes. Right, so what we're going to do now, see this doesn't matter, that's a cosmetic thing. Right, what we're going to do now is take our, bearing in mind this is still shrink plastic, we'll take our Perfect Pearls Mica Powder, love this stuff. Right, one of the things I really like about the range of Perfect Pearls is that they've got like a built-in um, sealant. 
as opposed to other mica powders where you've got to actually seal it afterwards these ones they 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 seal by themselves which is really good when you're working on black card or what I just showed you with the um, the talc and the ink blot plot you could do exactly what I'm doing here on black card right and you'd get a fantastic result too so now I've just painted with a with a soft brush this is this is a nice a good brush actually um, but I've just covered the Versamark with gold perfect pearls this one's called sunflower sparkle that'll do it's not gold it's sunflower sparkle looks like gold to me right so I've done that and then what I'm going to do is just excuse me just blow that try not to spit at your work that never helps and then I'm going to take a, a brush is that a clean oh that's wet I can't use that these brushes are beautiful they're really soft I use them all the time right and what we're going to do is just gently get rid look at that if you could leave it like that see how it's got a sh can you see that that drop shadow wouldn't that be a fantastic piece of artwork look it's got to be a way to do that right but anyway what we're trying to do is just get rid of the excess at the moment remember we didn't um we did not sand this if you sanded this you'd find out all about it now what i'm going to do next is cut it out so just as we did before just bear with me a, a minute you could go and put the kettle on actually while i'm doing this so i'm going to cut this out exactly as i did before there you go and then I can stamp on the back or not. In fact, today I probably won't worry about it. I just want to see if this works. Right, so I'll just cut around this. I'll be back in a minute. Okay, so I've cut out that one in black. And then scans for croc. I need them a croc. This is a good thing, I tell you. I don't sell them, but they're well worth investing in. Right. And I'm just going to make a hole so that I can hang it somewhere. Right. If I just take that off there, pop that on there. Just bear with me a second while I <laughs> just clear my decks for the great finale. Hang on. Right, here we go. So now this is the one we're going to do in black and we've got a little bit of um, excess haven't we on there a little bit of excess powder still but I, I'm not going to be too concerned about that maybe that will come off afterwards let's hope it does right I reckon this will be fine do you know what it is I need and I can't find is a I know I need a, a, t a no I don't think I, I'll leave it like that I was going to get a tissue and wipe it but I don't think I want to do that let me just show you this is for example if you do it on black card, exactly the same thing. This is joy to the world. If you're not using shrink plastic, I know I digress, but this is worth seeing. Dust it with talc or your corn flour um, anti-static mat. Ink blot plot with the Versamark. Then do exactly what I did with the, um, with the paintbrush and the gold mica powder or the gold, um, what's it called? Uh, perfect pearls, right? Because it's got a built-in sealant, then when I've done that, if I take a tissue, like a hanky, and then I wipe it gently and rub over it, I get rid of all the gold. It doesn't cling to this black card. And the reason it doesn't cling is because we put talc down first. So we put a film down first. If you forget the talc or the anti-static cornflower stuff, then it will be gold. It holds the gold. Right, I think I've procrastinated enough. I think it's time to do the shrink. Okay, here we go. Ready? And we're going to hold it in place like so. And we'll go to... What do I want to do? High, low, high. And here we go again. So you just waft and waft. In a minute it will start. Sometimes, like I said earlier, it's better in the oven... It's easier in the oven. You certainly get a more even melt. But, I mean, there's no fun in the oven. If you, if you do this, here we go. Don't stick now. Come on. Keep going. Don't stick. 
You don't need any friends. You can have fun all by yourself to do this job. Come on. You can do it. Hang on, this looks a bit ropey. Has it stuck? Oh, come on. It's not stuck. Here we are, stubborn, but not stuck. Hang on. Right, now we're getting there. This is looking good, guys. <laughs> right, you ready? I reckon. I know I didn't do the back, but... Oh, is it stuck? No, that's all right. Here we go. Well, hey. Right. I reckon that's about as small as it's going to get. Don't you? Right, where's that thing I want to flatten it with? Right, you ready? Flatten. Doesn't matter which side you flatten it with. Or on. It doesn't matter. Just flat is good. Right. Is it cool? Yes. Right, now. Let me co let it cool down a minute. Look, look, look. So we've got a kind of um, a gold shimmer over that, haven't we? Right. Can you see that okay? It's perfectly, it's perfectly shaped, isn't it? Now, when it cools down, let me see if I can wipe away. Yeah. See how the gold is coming off the black? Again, that's that talcum powder trick. But I want to get a tissue. Just stay there. I've got one in my handbag. I know I have. Oh, I must be getting old. I've always got tissues in my handbag now. Do you carry them in your handbag? It's funny, when I'm at the NEC and I get to this point in the demo and I say, has anyone got a tissue? And about 20 hands go like that. <laughs> right, see, so now I can wipe off the excess. You look, and what I'm doing is I'm just wiping back and it will take out, it's so brilliant because it, it kind of eliminates all the excess powder, but it leaves a little shimmer. And sometimes if I'd got rid of more before I shrank it, then you wouldn't even have that gold, but I actually really like that. Can you see that, Simon? Can you see that? Isn't that gorgeous? And so that you could do on that side and on that side. And here are a few that I did earlier. There's, there's one, there's another one. That went a bit shrinky, that went a bit skewy. Now this is an interesting one. This is using, this is even using the, the other stamp. So this is the positive and this is the negative. These are all done uh, with, a, with a heat gun, not, not in the Arga, which or in the oven, which is why they're a little bit skewy. But you know what? I don't, I don't mind skewy. See, now that one there, obviously I got rid of more of the gold before I started shrinking. But I'm, I'm happy with that. I'm happy that it didn't stick. I've made a bit, cut the pork scratchings as well. And then we've got all these, look. And there's one that I did with pencils. There's one that I did with archival links. I mean, these are just... A delightful thing to do and uh, and I will say that the shrink plastic that we sell that it does make a difference one of the reasons that it doesn't stick is because this shrink plastic is top quality made in the USA anyway thank you very very much for joining me I hope you enjoyed that little uh, journey with the three-way overlay baubles do look at all three of the YouTubes because they all the techniques are very interchangeable with all the different um, designs. I hope you like them. If you want to purchase them, then please go to www.claritystamp.com. I know that they will be on offer three for two. Um, other than that, everything that I use is available on that, um, on that website. I think, almost, you'll find it. Uh, I blog every day, barbaragrayblog.com. Uh, and, uh, and if you like what I do or what we do here, then please like and subscribe and then you'll know every time we bring out a new YouTube. Thanks very much for joining me and I wish you a very Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Bye bye now.